We're out here at the world famous Circuit of Americas in Austin, Texas for the Optima High Performance Expo. There's a lot going on out here for fans and participants at this three day event. But the main thing we're here to see is the Ultimate Streetcar Challenge and the World Championship Autocross. Both of these competitions have a winner-take-all $25,000 cash prize. We're not covering the play-by-play, -play, but we are going to give you a closer look at some of the cars that caught our eye. So let's go check out some of the cars here at the Optima Batteries High Performance Expo. So we're here in the Coda Garage with James Clay with the most badass car uh, probably I've ever seen. We did a little brief feature on it at the SEMA show last year, and here it is. And now we have more time to get some detail on it. Um, so, so James, how, how's the car been going the past year? Uh, it's been going great. So first of all, we finished it. So you know, it, it was uh, one of those builds that we brought to SEMA, and and. 90% and then of course it's that last 10% that just takes forever because that's where all the details lie. So it's completed, now it's been on track and it's amazing. I love it. I mean, this car is so badass. I mean, I don't even know where to start, but uh, <laughs> let me think. Uh, let, let's talk about the engine because the engine looks pretty cool and we didn't even get to cover it at SEMA. Okay, um, let's do. So the engine is a BMW P63. So this is uh, this is an engine that you would find in the uh, M6 uh, GT3 car, um, or would be if we didn't uh, build it with forged internals, a big a big valve train, uh, hog out the heads and flow them, uh, big turbos. So. While this engine in GT racing makes maybe 500 horse, uh, we're pushing over a thousand at the wheels. So um, big V8 power plant. We had to get well get rid of the front frame rails to jam it in the car, which was kind of one of the big challenges of the car. Um, and then slammed up against the firewall, running a transaxle instead of a transmission. Now. Um in GT, it's a restrictor motor, and this is like <laughs> GT on steroids. Uh, how, how big is the motor? Uh, it's 4.4 liters, um, so a decent size V8. Uh, the turbos are decently sized. As you know, when you're at Pikes Peak, you've got to have enough turbo uh, to not run out at the top. So we still, so while we're, we're saying maybe it's, I think it's 1150 at the wheel at sea level, we want to run it at 800 to maybe up to 900 or so at the at the top of the mountain at the 14,000 feet. Um, what kind of turbochargers are you running? Uh, these are Garrett-based WiseTech, so it's a it's a drop-in WiseTech option, which is actually uh, which, which bolts onto an M5 M6 streetcar. Uh, is it a G Series Aero? It is a G series, and I'm not the turbo guy, so that's that's why you're the expert. You you tell me what we got here. <laughs> uh, you have all this fancy shrouding all over it, so it's kind of hard for me to tell. <laughs> so uh, you, all the shroudings there, so you don't uh, heat soak everything with it being in the valley, right? Exactly. So it's it's a hot V motor, so it's it is typically super hot. Um, we're bringing in air uh, from outside to, to cool those things, extracting out the side. So um, exhaust out the side, but also we're, we're pulling the air out uh, with, with some vacuum as well. Man, I mean, all the detail, I'm, I'm like, I'm speechless. This is like my <laughs> dream race car. Like if I could do every single thing I wanted and it didn't have to answer to anybody, I, it would be something like this. Not like we always have to compromise aero or compromise the way the car looks because of sponsors. Right. Uh, if you're sponsored by an aero kit company, uh, you can't change the look of their kit to get more downforce. And man, this is like pure uncompromised badness. I mean, uh, yeah, I could geek out on this for hours. Uh, I mean, it's a dry sump, right? It is a dry sump. Um, so tank uh, on the other side of the firewall. Now, the, the dry sump, the pan, the whole kit kind of comes from that GT3 car. Uh, so we're, we're able to, to take a, a really well-developed BMW package as our, as our base for then what we've done in this car. We just had to figure out how to make it fit in the car. I know on our, our Pike Speed car, the arrow is really compromised because we had to get enough heat exchanger in there. Um, but, I mean, it seems like you got a lot of heat exchanger, but um, you're still able to get decent ducting up front. Well, so so the front of the car is all about that ducting, and, and with the front bumper, the the nose off the car, all you see is heat exchanger. So these these massive intercoolers on either side, um, the the two radiators and a B 
B configuration, ducting out the top, pulling out the bottom. So first of all, when we built this car, we built it around the tunnels. We knew we wanted tunnels under the car. Um, and then we said, well, maybe instead of an inline six, we'll drop this big V8 in. So that, uh, that kind of removed the frame rails. Um, and then, of course, what are we going to do for cooler and front arrow? So th those are the, the key factors uh, as we were building it that really defined what the car would be. Now, you, you said that you're constrained by sponsors and the look of the car and so forth. So we wanted this thing to be or look as much like an E36 BMW as it could. Uh, we're still retaining a lot of the external appearance. Uh, this is the period correct IMSA body kit um, with, with some additional ducts and extraction and so forth. But luckily, as, as the owner of Bimmer World, which is a sponsor of this, and Optima Batteries, who just loves doing cool stuff, we just got to do whatever we wanted to do. So pretty fortunate there. Um, I really love how you maintained the uh, wheel well ceiling and all that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's always a struggle on, on a normal kind of budget. Uh, I mean, it's, it's critical to get the arrow right to, you know, like seal that area off, and your, your car has done a really good job. Well, we've we've had uh, we've we've had a couple of guys working on this. Wayne Yon, who's our engineer at Bimmer World uh, and our race team for for many years. Uh, Rich Grupp, who's the lead fabricator, uh, prototype guy, uh, prototype racer. So a lot of these things um, do, do come from prototypes. So where where this is a little bit more common. So those guys, uh, kind of as the builders, designers of the of the car. Uh, we're really able to integrate a lot of this technology that they're familiar with, um, you know, kind of proven package. So at, at least as a starting point, uh, we can have something that we, we know is going to work fairly well. And, and so, of course, now we're in the fine tuning stage or maybe even rougher tuning stage of really making everything maximized and work like we think it works in theory in the real world. Now, I see all the tricks like I see uh, front. <laughs> front diffuser and your splitter, uh, vortex generators. Um, have you guys used computational tools like CFD or, or actual wind tunnel testing on this car? Not yet. So a lot of this stuff, and, and given the budget of this car, which has certainly been stretched as, we, as we've gone and, and gotten crazier on a lot of this stuff, um, but the, the budget was a reasonable private budget. And so to be able to do all these things, um, we just we just kind of had to take best practices. We borrowed a lot of parts. So that was that was a big piece. So the, the front splitter, the, the under tray under the engine, uh, some of that extraction um, comes from a Lola prototype. Um, and then we get to the back is, is an Argo Argo based tunnel. Um, so we're, we're pulling things that we know work. Um, you'll, you'll actually see these vortex generators maybe if you went and looked in the IMSA paddock on some of the prototypes now. So, so we've, we've taken pieces um, and then we will, we will go to the tunnel um, and we will, we will fine tune these things, but we're just not there yet. Um, is there any part of the stock unibody left or is it a uh, pure tube frame? <laughs> Uh, yes, the, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over to the other side of the car, if I may. Everything firewall, back, canopy, um, back to the taillights is still original BMW. So, you know, by weight, maybe we're not, uh, we're not majorly BMW, but we certainly have about 400 pounds of shell still left on this car. So it's almost like a DTM or a JGTC car, because uh, the way the car is now, it wouldn't be legal under... Um, American time attack rules, uh, not even for unlimited class. Right. And, you know, that's that's unfortunately or fortunately um, part of the build of this car. Uh, I, I initially started and, and with previous generations or previous concepts, we were going to be legal for uh, lower class in, in Pikes Peak or for some of the time attack and so forth. And I found I found that we were building um, kind of an oddball car that was unique to, you know, to, to these very specialized events. And really what I wanted was just an awesome car. And so we kind of threw the rule books out and said, we're going to build it and then we're going to figure out where we can run it. So, uh, I mean, that's almost kind of unfortunate because this is a car that's worthy of going to a world time attack in Australia and, and, uh, you know, showing them that us Americans could do stuff too, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I would love to. I would love to take it to some of those events. Um, we have some exhibition type events planned, um, but really, we just we wanted to. We, we work within such a defined box in most of the racing we do and most of the builds we do, and so it was really a, a pretty awesome experience to kind of take away 
most of those constraints and really just build what we wanted to build. Um, so your suspension is uh, all unequal length A-arm all the way around and... Uh, just front. Just front. Oh, so okay. actually we've retained the, the semi-trailing arms from the BMW really? uh, in the rear, which be because they work fairly well. Um, so the, the front McPherson strut, um, that, that kind of had to go and with the you know, with the packaging, with the semi-tube front, it was a good opportunity to just redesign the front suspension. Uh, what kind of shocks are you running? So we're using motion controls. Uh, it is a four-way, which is pretty important to make the aero package work. Um, and we, we have a technical relationship with them spanning many, many years. So um, we're, we're fortunate to, to have a company like that to be able to build what we need, uh, you know, as we develop this car. Uh, what kind of spring rates did you end up running with all this aero? So spring rates as they sit right now, uh, we're around, uh, I think maybe 2,400 in the front this, mm -hmm. for this event, um, which with the, with the motion ratios, I think we're, we're dialed back to sub 2,000 on the, on the front wheel rate. Um, but we're, it's kind of this weird, uh, weird packaging thing right now. We're, we're running it on spring. Uh, we're, not, we're not into packers and we need, to, we need to stay on spring because we're aware that we're tuning it for Pikes Peak. Um, but we're also aware that we're gonna need to lighten up that spring rate and bring up the height of the car um, because of course, as, as much as Pikes Peak has deteriorated at this point, it's, it's, probably, uh, it's, it's probably not where it needs to be right now. Maybe you could do a third shock. <laughs> <laughs> that would be absolutely awesome. We, that was certainly a consideration, but uh, you know, the scope has to stop creeping at some point, right, Mike? Oh, I mean, it has everything else. You might as well, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's absolutely wild, but uh, it, you know, at some point, we, we did start with, with a blueprint of the build, and I, I preach that to our Bimworld customers that are, that are building uh, their racing machines. And, uh, it, you know, I, I feel like for everything to work together, you really should have a cohesive blueprint. Um, I'm aware that we've, we've crept past it in multiple areas, but um, we still, even, even with that creep, we, we defined a new box and we're, we're living within that box. Uh, what kind of engine management and electronics are you, do you have? So engine management is Bosch Motorsports, uh, also using Bosch Motorsports for the ABS, and MoTeC, uh, MoTeC PDM and Dash um, okay. for a lot of the controls as well. These brakes are pretty impressive. Uh, <laughs> uh, what's, what's going on with them? So Performance Friction Brakes, uh, one of our sponsors again for 10 plus years, provided the brake system to the car. This is from the 991 GT3 RSR. And so this is their endurance package. So massive six piston front, four piston rear, 30 millimeters of brake pad, which of, of course, given this car, we don't necessarily need that, but we do find ourselves needing the high bite, high grip, um, big rotor diameter that it, that it gives us as well. Um, and then Pike's Peak, like the brakes run surprisingly hot there. Mm -hmm. So it, it, we have big thermal sinks uh, with, with a 380 mil rotor. Thought about carbon, um, but you know that's just another element that's so hard to dial. Um, and given given the complexity of the car in general and the complexity of that Pikes Peak event, that's that's something that we just felt like was was out of the range of what we wanted to tackle this time. Um, what about your hydraulics and pedals and stuff? Tilton pedals. Um, it's a it's a pull type master cylinder uh, that works with the ABS. Um, you know, of course, Bosch Motorsport ABS um, provides some challenges to the hydraulics, but uh, that Tilton box um, that's sliding. Uh, I'm a I'm a tall guy, but and I don't think a lot of other people are are saddling up for this ride. But uh, it, it does give us some some flexibility uh, for somebody else to jump in the car as well. Going to the back of the car, what kind of wing is this? This is a piece that A.J. Hartman made for us. Uh, it's his dual element wing. Um, I am betting it comes from some sort of IndyCar platform or something like that. We were just looking at the end plates and assume that's, that's where that, that got pulled from. But um, you know, honestly, we came into this wing and said we just need a big old wing that's, that's lightweight, super, super stiff, dual element, um, and that's what we came up with. It looks like you have an alloy carrier for your diff and, and your suspension and uh, um, some kind of 
pumps. Uh, what, what's going on back there? <laughs> so a, a lot's going on back here. So with the with the engine fully back against the front firewall, uh, we we ran out of room up there. So we've got a torque tube coming from the front to a Hollinger transaxle in the back. So this is a six speed sequential. Um, we've got hanging from that cross member. Uh, we have our air jacks, mm -hmm. uh, the Optima battery, of course, uh, air pump for the air shift system, mm -hmm. um, and then some of the electronics that live back there as well, and, and including coolers for that transaxle. Uh, the red thing is the uh, air tank for the air shifter? That's correct. And it's a paddle shift? Correct. Uh, the, the air tank for the air shifter and also helps with the wastegate control. Oh, okay. Oh, you're running that much boost. Right. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> So this is still the uh, semi-trailing arm rear suspension. Correct. Uh, so this this E36 chassis car, uh, the the semi-trailing arm that we used is actually from an E46 M3, but still still super similar. Um, it it has the the camber gain uh, based on our based on our geometry in the back that we that we needed, and the semi-trailing arm uh, does work really well and really well for the packaging with the tunnels as well. It's not a true semi-trailing arm, though it's kind of a trailing arm with an upper control arm to get camber control, exactly right? Exactly correct. Um, have you done anything with the geometry to get rid of anti or um, anything like that? Absolutely. We, we initially um, hoped that we would be able to package the, the, front, um, the front piece of, of that arm into the into the factory shell and then uh, once we moved those tunnels further forward and you know we, we kind of scratched our head of, of why are we trying to keep so much fac factory shell um, we, we just kind of scrapped that and then we were able to, to place the suspension points exactly where we wanted to have them so we you know no constraints there we were initially trying to stay within a one inch rule and and that's you know we just abandoned that and have exactly what we want now uh not knowing, but just a quick eyeball. It looks like your rear roll center is sort of high. It is, absolutely. Um, and we're we're working on that. Um, that was that was something we, we knew, um, but we're you know that's that's one of these things. We're in that uh, build, test, rebuild, retest cycle. Um, so some of this stuff is is going to change as we go. Yeah, with a lot of geometric anti roll. Are, are you uh, running much sway bar? Uh, currently, the car has no sway bar front nor rear. Oh, really? Um, and you know, in the rear, that's how we would like to run it. Um, to kind of, w with some of the challenges that Pikes presents with those tight hair backs that are heavily cambered. Um, but uh, we, we pondered adding one in the front. Currently, it works really well without it, um, and it's a packaging problem. One that we think we know the answer to, but if we can make it work on all spring, we may do that. Third spring, easy to put the roll bar in. <laughs> right. I know, I know. Man, I mean, your tunnels are right up against your lower control arms, so you're not running much droop, I take it. Not a significant amount of droop, no. This is like, um, you know, like if I win the lottery and uh, I, I wish I could build some of this or, or be a part of a car like this. It's just so awesome. Well, thank you, and, and I, I love talking to you about it because you're a guy that spots things and, and identifies what it is, you know. Watching the guys build this thing over over two and a half, three years, um, there's so much thought, so much engineering that goes into it, and sometimes it's hard to peel back all those layers. And you know, I think with your experience, uh, you know, I, I really enjoy uh, your appreciation of it because it, it it takes somebody with an eye for it to catch a lot of these things. Well, there we go. I mean, this is the most awesome car ever. I got a serious case of car envy. Uh, I, I know that I'll probably never be involved in the program that could do something this cool, but I'm really bummed it doesn't have a third spring, dude. It does have a passenger seat, Mike, so, so maybe you can be involved in that portion of the program. <laughs> oh, is uh, meat ballast? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, well, thank you, James, and as always, it was awesome. I mean, when I say this is my favorite car ever, I'm not joking. And uh, I'm usually really jaded, and I see all kinds of things. I'm going, yeah, okay. Uh, but. But yours, I'm actually excited about. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it, Mike.